welcome to series of WIPA short interviews with representatives of investment promotion agencies. My name is Boštian Skalar and I'm the executive director of World Association of Investment Promotion Agencies, WIPA. The purpose of these interviews is, of course, to get an overview how IPAs all around the world are responding to COVID-19 crisis, what measures they are taking or they took it already, and what actions they are planning for the post-COVID-19 era. And it's my sincere pleasure to have with me today, Mr. Roderick Cherry. He's the CEO of Invest St. Lucia. Uh, hello, Roderick, uh, welcome. It's nice to have you with me today. Um, my first question to you would be, so what's the current situation in St. Lucia? So what measures are being taken to alleviate the impact of COVID-19 on the economy from, let's say, governmental perspective and as well from IPA perspective? Go ahead, floor is yours. Hey. All right, thank you very much, Skyla. It's really good to see you again. Um, uh, the COVID-19 situation has really taken us all sur um, uh, by surprise and has really um, uh, affected the economy of the world. And of course, um, uh, small island states like St. Lucia are particularly affected as well. Our, our current situation is that um, uh, we've had 19 cases of COVID-19, oh, sorry, 18 cases of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. But fortunately, um, uh, we have had no deaths um, uh, from COVID-19. Um, uh, we are currently on the 26th consecutive day where we have no active cases of COVID-19. Um, uh, so it's been pretty good. Um, uh, what, we, what we did do is in um, uh, the late March, um, uh, when we discovered the first case of COVID-19, um, uh, we were aggressive in shutting down the borders um, uh, and shutting down the economy. Um, and then in, on, on April 1st, there was a complete 24 hour shutdown. Um, the management, the emergency management um, a committee who is managing the situation has set a, a five stage um, a lockdown um, a process or five stage process for us to deal with it. And we are currently in stage three. Uh, having not had cases for a number of days, on the 1st of June, we will enter stage four, where most of the businesses and so would open again. Um, from, from the 18th, we were allowed into the office, of course, with um, our protocols. So I must say, from, from that aspect, we are, we are not doing too, too badly. The, the effect, though, is on the economy of St. Lucia. Um, uh, as you would know, St. Lucia is heavily dependent on tourism. And from the middle of March, when we close our borders, we have not had one tourist in St. Lucia. Um, uh, our um, economy is, our GDP is what, 66% tourism related, um, dependent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so this has really um, uh, affected us quite a bit. And, and to be a bit skeptical in terms of how we will open the borders again and what protocols. But there is a plan, um, uh, and some in, in June, from June 1, um, uh, we would open the borders once more, but in a phased, measured approach with a number of protocols. Uh, but this is this is what this is the current situation with us. So we have pro we have protocols for physical distancing protocols. Um, from from our standpoint, though. Um, the economy has really taken a bashing, uh, you know, um, I, with, with our economy so dependent on tourism, it, it, we, it, it, is, it is really, really difficult for us. Uh, how would you say, uh, since um, I presume the percentage uh, you set of tourism is very high, actually, of your income, um, do, you, do you think it would go back to normal? I mean, would, would the people go, although, I mean, I'm sure you are promoting uh, your island has uh, almost no COVID cases now and a very, I would say, no ep epidemic. And uh, do you think um, you would need to uh, restructure? This is, let's say, my next question. And uh, you're as a leader, how do you see your, your let's say, uh, role as an IPA? Would you need to restructure your approach towards, let's say, investors? towards even tourists, uh, towards, uh, I mean, any other, let's say, uh, who contributes to your, to your FDI uh, as an IPA, you will take it maybe as a chance, not as a challenge, but as a chance to change a bit, to revise your well, strategy? Yes, yes, Kyla. I mean, the, what, 
what COVID-19 has really shown us um, uh, is something I suppose we, we, we knew, that the over-dependence on, on one sector, you know, is, is really not sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, but with, with COVID-19 coming and we not having one, tour, one tourist in the country for, uh, I mean, six, what, eight weeks, you know, that mm -hmm. shows us definitely that there is need for economic um, diversification, which of course we are trying to do. However, the market has been always telling us that tourism is the way to go. You know, we just have competitive advantage in that. But it means for us, for Invest in Lucia, what, what we've done um, in, in March, we have gone back to the drawing board, we have looked at our strategy, and we have refocused a bit. And, um, uh, and economic um, diversification is definitely one of the, one of the, 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 the main changes that we've made in the focus um, of the strategy going forward. Um, when you talk about strategy, right, we look at strategy is really um, a, a set of, of actions um, uh, that you take now based on success in the future. But sure. the, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, has shown us that the future is not what we think it would be, or there's a possibility it would change. So definitely um, uh, from our standpoint, we need to look at the other sectors of the economy that would, you know, provide us with sustainability, you know, and have a more balanced product, um, so to speak, you know, um, going, going forward. Which, which uh, sectors, so, which sectors yeah. sorry to interrupt, which sectors do you find it as, a, let's say, potential to make diversification? Of the economy. Okay, so from, from our standpoint, um, uh, when we, when we um, uh, did the refocusing, the strategic refocusing, right, we're looking more at manufacturing because the research mm -hmm. has shown us that um, uh, manufacturing um, uh, has a better yield for, for mm -hmm. us. More of the investment in manufacturing, which is um, uh, um, more people, uh, it has a greater impact on the economy. One dollar spent in manufacturing, FDI in manufacturing is more than tourism, you know. However, we have some, um, some limitations in terms of size and what we really can, can do. So we've, we've gone further and identified what these limitations are and we will be aggressively pursuing policies um, uh, to ensure that we, to, to at least try to, to, to take out some of those, those limitations. Um, in addition to that, um, uh, we need to focus also on um, uh, um, e-commerce. Mm -hmm. And we, we've realized that because of um, the, the nature of our infrastructure, we have a pretty modern um, uh, um, IT telecoms infrastructure in the country. And we have um, uh, the, 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 our BPO sector is growing quite quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we see some competitive advantage in that area, and that is one of the areas we need to we need to look at. And the other important one for us, though, is um, uh, agriculture. In fact, more more mm -hmm. more than agriculture, agribusiness. Agribusiness. Uh, you know, um, yeah, because they traditionally in Saint Lucia, agriculture was seen as just planting um, uh, food to eat. You know, and it was not there was never really any focus on looking at agriculture as a business. But mm -hmm. what this thing has shown us, particularly with the, um, uh, with the closing of the borders, that um, uh, agribusiness is something that we can do. Everything grows in St. Lucia. We need to take advantage of that. So COVID-19 has really forced us to look inward a bit to be able to be successful um, uh, you know, in, the, in the outside world in general. How, how are, let's say, uh, the, um, how is the environment, are, is the environment, investment environment ready, especially for this digitalization, for e-commerce? Are the, let's say, laws and bylaws in place? And uh, um, I don't know, are you able to use these tools for, let's say, digital approach? Right. So in, in, in re-strategizing, what we realize is that our role um, uh, in policy advocacy has to increase tremendously. We need to focus even more on that. Um, so, so we are at a stage where we have identified the tenants of the, the strategy going forward. And in order to, to 
you know, to create um, the environment, we see ourselves as the IPA focusing a lot more on policy advocacy to put the policies in place to ensure that the business environment is, is conducive towards the strategy that we need to employ going forward. This was actually, it's an excellent, let's say, start of my third question. I was exactly one, I wanted to ask you about the role of IPA and also not just an IPA, especially as you mentioned, as in the role of advocacy. So being able to cooperate with different stakeholders, not just, let's say, investors, internal, external, uh, domestic companies, but also with the government. So to, to speak the business language, and to transform the uh, ideas and the requests of investors to your government so they could put in place appropriate environment that it will be even more attractive for new investors. So I wanted you to elaborate a bit on this collaboration, cooperation, or let's say multilateral approach, not just unilateral approach. <laughs> right. one, one thing, the, uh, another lesson that we've learned also from COVID-19 is the need for collaboration. I think the saying that we're all in it is very true. Um, but associations such as, as WIPER and even, um, uh, say, KIPER, where um, uh, best practice and so on is shared, are really important you know, for countries like ours, um, IPs like us, which are small, struggling in small countries. You know, um, uh, we need to know what best practice is so that we can you know, leapfrog the mistakes that have been made, you know, from, from other countries. So the collaboration is, is very important. And what we're seeing is from even a regional standpoint, there has been a lot more sharing of ideas of, you know, of, of how people are coping with it and, and what strategies they, 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 they use. So um, one of the things, though, that we, we have recognized also is a greater need for uh, facilitation and aftercare. Mm -hmm. So, although it is normally part of the, you know, the, 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 the process um, uh, that, that we undertake as an IPA, um, given the new environment, say post-COVID, um, uh, there, be, there will be a lot more competition because we, as, as, you have, as your organization has published the, 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 um, uh, the decrease in FDI, global FDI, you know, um, it means therefore that we will all be fighting for the same little dollar, <laughs> you know, we'll all be fighting for it. So we expect um, uh, an increase in the competitive environment for FDI. And as such, we see competitive advantage being on the quality of the facilitation and aftercare that an IPA can offer investors. I like to actually, I like to hear it. You said that co cooperation regional also matters. This is what uh, we always believe it's, although there will be more and more competition, the regional, let's say, connect connection will be more important because the investors will try to see the region stable. They would like to see the region cooperating and giving uh, wider opportunities. So I, I always, let's say, uh, like to see your region. Uh, you mentioned Kaipa, for example, that you are trying to put the force together and you work together. So your message is very clear. We should be rather, uh, let's say, partners than competitors, right? That's right, that's right. We, we, can be, we can be partners today and competitors tomorrow, you know, yes. <laughs> and in, which, <laughs> in which case we can all win. But what has happened though, we find um, uh, that Kuiper has, has done, has, during this time, they've really reached out to the, to the various IPAs. You know, as, as well as um, uh, the information coming from, from WIPA also, I, I mean, this, is, this has really, you know, um, uh, helped us in planning what we, what we can expect post-COVID and also what's been happening around the world with the other IPAs. And that, you know, that, that, type, of, um, uh, that type of collaboration, that type of information is always good for decision making. And I think at the end of it, we can all benefit from, you know, from that closer collaboration. It's very glad to hear that our services are helpful and we are trying to really support our members. Um, you know, it's not only uh, you can benefit from others, believe me, also from your experience, others might benefit. And that's why it's good to hear your insights. You know, I really appreciate uh, that you shared with us very practical insights. What are you doing? Because it's not every economy is the same. And your economy, as you say, as a small island, 
is a very mm. different one, but has some, let's say, specifics, but might help with some ideas that you provided to some other uh, IPAs, which are, let's say, in a different position, but maybe might use some of your insights. And uh, I'm sure you watched as well some of other videos, you can get as yeah. well some insights. And uh, uh, we are also uh, publishing uh, best practices in our webpage, so the people can very easily check what the other peer colleagues are doing. Uh, so, um, I appreciate, Roderick, really, it was my sincere pleasure to have you with us, and I'm sure the audience would really appreciate what you shared. Um, so, um, for the listeners, the one who listen or to see us, um, I would also like, of course, thank you very much to following WIPA and uh, follow us on our social media and our webpage, WIPA.org where, as I just said, we are putting a lot of relevant information, um, not just how IPAs are responding to the COVID-19 crisis, but also what kind of measures they are putting for the future, how they are preparing for the new normal. So I would, all, uh, I would like to uh, invite all to stay tuned. And uh, uh, again, uh, Roderick, thank you very much. My final message would be, just keep on going uh, we are here for you to assist you uh, and stay active and stay especially safe and healthy okay thank you very much Skyla. Um, uh, you know i i really like the fact that we're part of wiper i i enjoy the the interaction when when we can do it um, uh, even though these days it's really um uh, you know via this media but yeah. um, uh, keep on doing a good job. Um, uh, we've le we're learning quite a bit, you know, and, um, uh, and we really appreciate, you know, the camaraderie and the support that, that um, uh, Wiper has continued to give us. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you so much. So keep in touch. Hopefully, okay. hopefully as soon as possible in person. Okay. All right. Hopefully. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.